when you ask every time trying is like you're trying to save the world but nobody's trying nothing we're just doing our thing because it's our fucking mission in life and we're happy to do it you know and we're not trying nothing we're just convinced it and i say we because i'm pretty sure in my same position are the people who really have years on the struggle for this like arjan or frank or the whole team so good people get together for do things like this in different parts of the world risking our freedom and risking our families and stuff just because we are convinced we're not trying nothing you know that this is a fact that these things has to be done no matter if it's legal or not the legal situation will change today tomorrow or in 25 years but it's gonna change for sure because the pressure people is doing, people like us from the underground and people like normal citizens with A's telling the fucking government they feel better and they live better with grass. That's the fact. We're not trying to do nothing, you know, we're just convinced that life is better and humans are better and the fucking world is better with grass. So let's check it out. Ta-da! The highway of Philip slides from Holland. <laughs> no more than number one. <laughs> big, 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 big. What's going, guys? Let's have a look here. Look at country there's a lot of issues with the guerrillas, with bandits, with paramilitaries, with police, with armies. And, uh, it's a hard country. Everywhere where you come you see people going in prison, people dying. The guys we have with us, they lost their brothers, their fathers. Jose even lost his mother in this war. So it just gives you an idea how difficult uh, this country is. Aquí se da café, se da plátano, se da yuca, se da maíz, se da racacha, se da lulo, se da tomate de árbol, se da la mora. Entonces es un territorio muy productivo. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the um, into the area of uh, near Cali where the Limon Verde grows. We're going to talk to the local leaders and see um, how 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 complicated it is to go in there because everybody told us you cannot go in there, but we're going to see for ourselves. What we're going to do is we're going to go straight into that little village. What was, what's the name of that village there up there? Corinto. Yeah, Corinto and El Palo, 
and we're just gonna go to the Indian tribes there and see how far it is. And then they'll give us a direction, and from then on we will take it. If it takes a few days to get in there, what is the possibility? We first go to an area, area scout some there, and then see what happens. But we don't forget... To, we have to keep flexible, eh? Yeah, but don't forget that all areas are difficult, eh? Because one area is FARC, the other area is ANL, sure. the other area is paramilitaries. Sure. So we will have issues all over. We just have, to f just have to face that. This is a very, very difficult country. You can, can compare it a little bit to, uh, to Pakistan and, uh, and, uh, and Afghanistan. We'll have some <laughs> issues that we have to take care of. Let's see how it goes. I right, shall so we stay one night here and tomorrow we'll fly to yeah. Cali, no? Yeah, okay, let's go. Yeah. No, we love them. I think we should keep getting out of here, though. Yeah, let's keep mo moseying. Everything is real. We had like uh, 40, 50 people going mad, throwing shit to the car. Then the cops came and uh, we had to ma make a quick evacuation with two cop cars. But we got we got out of there. And uh, we're going to sleep for five hours. And tomorrow morning at five o'clock, we're going to take the airplane to Cali. We are uh, in the Cali area. Um, it's the southern part of Colombia. It's where uh, the Verde Limon land race is, is, uh, is hiding. So we're gonna go see if we can find it. Here, here. We need rocks. We need no more green rocks. Rocks. No, I don't have rocks here. <laughs> No, 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 no. Nothing. Good. Oh my God. Okay, forget it, guys. We're gonna walk. We try one more time. Hi, oh, yuck. This is good. It sucks. I am on fucking tired. Hopefully, we don't have to get up at 7 a.m. You know, we have, we have two more days. Man, welcome to my world. <laughs> We are at the farm, dude. Yeah, crack up, dude. You'll see this hash machine, man. <laughs> Maybe somebody's gonna put an M16 in your coolio tonight. Coolio. You fucking ass. Better don't man. understand.
This is 8,000 plants per hectare, and there are two hectares in this, so 16,000 plants. 200 grams per plant, that's two tons per crop, that's six tons per year coming out of this place, of this quality. And I am seriously impressed. I am shocked. This is pure porno. Pure porno, really. For us, it's really, really nice to see other parts of the world, people developing themselves and becoming great farmers. You know? And if we fight this war all together, all over the world, all these farmers, in the United States there's no way back, in Canada there's no way back, in Colombia there's no way back, in Holland there's no way back, in Spain there's no way back, and we all, all work together, all the breeders and all the growers, we can win this battle after 50 years of madness. <laughs> Breeding plants is, as I said, creating something new. It's like you could you could compare it with a chef, a Michelin star chef who's creating new recipes. The ingredients are are almost infinite to combine, and the way you can combine it is almost without limit. And it's up to the talent and the art and the knowledge of the chef to combine it, to combine them in the way to create something good. And you can see it a little bit the same way. So do you consider yourself a chef? Uh, a green chef, for sure. <laughs> This, this is haze. Kush is the, the, the same kush, but with a tint of haze. A fino, that is more sativa. Really more sativa. Oh, perfect, man. Fuck, we need a clone of this one, man. Win a battle against legalization and try to find a system that everybody has a benefit of. This is the most important thing. Because now, as we look, we are in a great plantation, but it's still very legal. Right. You know so what the people are doing here. And they're all jeopardizing their life and prison and everything, you know? Right. And so part of your sort of like uh, enterprise is making the world a better place? Well, for us, this, this is our core thing, you know? What we like to see is what we show in our movies. For example, St. Vincent and Trinidad. We did that in one movie. You go to Trinidad, you have a, a, a curfew at six o'clock. Yeah, they banned all the marijuana on the island, all the cocaine is coming from South America through Trinidad. There's shootings in the street, there's arms disappearing, there's corruption. The whole island went down. Compared to cocaine, is there more people in, for prison, in prison for cocaine or for marijuana here in Trinidad? Oh, marijuana by far. Yeah? Yeah. You go next door to St. Vincent, everybody can smoke marijuana. There's great tourism going on. The cops are laid back, the government is laid back. There's a whole different vibe in the streets. Right. So, two countries very close to each other. Yeah, 20, 30 miles, and you see a complete different vibe, the way the government operates against the local drugs. Right. And people, and the, gov the government should see this. This is also one of the reasons that Holland basically kind of legalized marijuana a very long time ago, in the 70s, because we saw the benefit of it. Sativa crossed with Nicole's Kush, with this purplish thing on the leaves, beautiful. And their heads, they have a little bit of rust, a little bit of white fly, but they're healthy plants overall. When you come to a uh, plantation like this, what are you looking for in the buds and in, in the plants? It's beautiful. Look how much resin I'm ready for. This thing is like four weeks into flowering. Five First of all, we evaluate the general structure of the plants. We look at the, the, the branching, we look at the internode space, so the distance between one branch and the next branch, how uniform it is, how big it is. Then we, go, then we move on to the bud structure. We look how close the bud is, how tight it gets. Now these plants, considering they are three weeks, four weeks away from harvest, they are already very, very well developed. Mm -hmm. We examine the resin, the quantity of the resin in general on the bud, on the leaves, on the leaflets, right. and then we can we can evaluate even the calyx to leaf ratio, even though it's a little bit early to do that at this stage. But we can see the proportion between the number of calyx 
and the number of leaf in the bud. Uh -huh. And the more calyx, the less leaf, the better it is, of course, because the final product will be easier to manicure. Right. Um, and then we can start evaluating the more personal, the more, the more uh, individual side of the uh, of the situation, which is the smell in this case, because plants that have this amount of resin already have a good smell, mm -hmm. something that can tell you how good it is already, how right. strong. So it's. And then uh, from here we wait uh, a few more weeks and we're gone and then when the product is finished uh, then we can finally evaluate it for 100%. Yeah, the crocodile hunters, the snake hunters and the straight hunters. I love it too much. In Holland until 95, I would say 80% was hash. Still the old, old generation smokes hash. And then after it became marijuana, but in other countries, in North Africa, in, in, the, in Milana, for example, or in, in Nepal, it's all uh, hash smoking countries. But we smoke both. So when Argent rolls into town, why is it such a big deal to the farmers here? It's a, it's a really big deal. You, you could say, let's, let's make a comparison with the music industry, for example, just to make you understand. If Arian would be one of the biggest music producers in the world, and this would be a bunch of upcoming talents and artists from, from a cool uh, underground neighborhood, mm -hmm. They would love to have these big producers home checking out their, their music. Right. And so this is like their big shot, maybe. Absolutely. Because Arjun could walk home and some of this stuff. Absolutely. Keep, how do you think they've done? If this I is think, the I think uh, looking around this is pretty impressive. Uh -huh. I mean, I've, I've been looking at marijuana plants for the last 20 years of my life. Right. But this is pretty impressive. So why do you come up to these places? Like, what, what are you getting out of this? Basically, we uh, evaluate what they're doing here. ta -da! The highway of Philips lights from Holland. <laughs> so on number one. We see the size of the operation, we see how good the operation is, how technical. Es impresionante. La planta es muy bien, muy buena, muy bien curada. Se ve que todo es organizado muy bien, muy lindo. What techniques they, they're using, what they're doing with the plants. Uh, they have cleaning the plot and new plants are coming now, so they have the cycle going boom, 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 boom. How far they space them, how, how they feed them, mm -hmm. how they grow them in general. And it's really amazing to see the development here because this is a place that is very uh, natural, very organic, yet very high tech in a way. Even though it's a simple, simple construction, you can see that every uh, technique is applied properly and thought of. So it's very well planned. The logistics are amazing. On a size like this, the logistics are very impressive. And so, can you describe like the strain of weed that they're growing here? Like this one is the Nicole's Kush. Uh, it's been created by our friend Algato. And it's a very particular plant because it's really cushy. You can definitely smell the cushion in it, but it's a lot more fruity, a lot more flowery in the smell than just regular kush. Right. It loses some of that earthy feeling of the kush, and it gains some fruitiness. Mm -hmm. Very special. It's and it's the fruitiness is about a flavor thing, not about like a high. Absolutely, but it's mostly about flavor. Uh -huh. Talking about the effect, we smoked it already yesterday, and yeah. it was really strong, really physical, right. like a kush should be. Mm -hmm. Very, uh, very body relaxing, very couch locking. Right. So and it's a, a sativa or no? It's more of an indica. It's, it's an a indica? hybrid technically. It's oh, not okay. a pure indica, but it's more towards the indica side of the spectrum than towards the sativa. And what does that mean exactly? It means the, the sativa plant and the indica plant are the two extreme on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And then let's say 99.9% .9 of all strains that you see around are actually hybrids in between these two extremes. Right. 
uh, pure sativa and pure indica are very difficult to find, maybe impossible nowadays right. because of the evolution of cannabis. Um, and so what are we doing with the land races? Can you explain that in, com uh, in comparison to what we're looking at here? Sure, land races are different than this just because land races have not been influenced by external uh, genetics. Uh, the land race is typical of one area, for example in this area we look for the Verde Limon land race of Colombia and it's something that is really in this area for a long time. Uh, when we say long time we mean maybe 50, maybe 100, maybe more mm -hmm. years uh, without influences from external genetics, so without people bringing seeds from abroad or from other areas and starting cross-pollination. And why is that important to find though? Is it to it's important because uh, it's creating a very important database. Uh, there are many land races around the planet that are uh, not uh, preserved at the moment mm -hmm. and that contain very unique cannabinoid and terpene profiles and these are uh, maybe useful in the future for creating new medicine, right. for sure useful in the future to create new recreational strains, new flavors, new effects in okay. cannabis. So do you feel like it gives you a leg up on the competition to like go out and find these land races because your palate is sort sure. of bigger? Sure, bigger? absolutely. So we, the bigger the library of genetics, the better the breeding can be. And so you're excited to see these again because you can bring them back to Amsterdam sure. and then start working on them. Working right? with it, of course. So Selecting first the individuals that deserve attention mm -hmm. and then inbreeding them uh, with themselves. So preserving the real genetic. Right. Or using the genetic for crossing finding something that can go good with it, try across, see an F1 hybrid generation, mm -hmm. select interesting individuals from that generation, and create something new. And why do you love creating something new? Because cannabis is about variety. The beauty of cannabis, the power of cannabis, is its variety. It's the fact that there are so many flavors, so many effects, medicinal and recreational. Um, it's a plant, but it's not one plant, it's thousands of plants. Mm -hmm. And we contribute to this. Um, for us, for us, this is what we do. This is who we are. This, this is why we call ourselves strain hunters, and this is why we we put passion in what we do. And you're kind of like crazy scientists too, because you're like searching the world I for like all to these say, things. I like to back. say breeder, you know, that's, that's <laughs> farmers. That's what we are. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> We're not really scientists. <laughs> Here you have five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have 50 clones, but these are gigantic clones. The advantage of this stuff is that you have a, a much quicker start. You have a very, very healthy clone with a big root ball. The stronger the root ball, the better the plant goes, you know? And if you have a plant like this going, you probably save two weeks on the growth because it's like really uh, vigorous and powerful, you know, it will boom. It will shoot up, it looks also at They save 10 days of growth, eh, those clones there. Eh? He can already from this mother cut this size, yes. directly cut yes. this size. Exactly. Yeah. We'll try it you have and you see how efficient the dark feeling system is? Yeah, perfect. Fucking the cheapest, best way to keep the light. Look how strong it is, you can really bend them and like, they don't crack at nothing. The, the quality of the clones is like really, really strong. Nice. You see? And also and here the old style razor blade. Yeah, you see? You still do it. Yeah. Look, that. look, here is the old style road. razor blade. Yeah, look, look, look. They're all over the place. Look. <laughs> They're all over the place. You They're see them lying here. here. So, so use those. the way they clean them, they, they take off all the little stuff. Also, like the same, the same in the glass house, this is still how I operate. And we are one of the few, and he took it over. Look, also in the clones, the air goes through. You know, and you only need the top, you know, so <laughs> it really shoots up. Fantastic. Yeah, great system. Before they go in the ground, yes. you take all what you're not going to show. Yes. And the only thing we leave is the top. just a little top. And this yes. is how we put them. Uh -huh. And then they shoot up. This big, right? This like big. this big. Yeah. Also, you can see the nutrients. It's like really, really perfect here. There's hardly yes. any red. It's hard wood. You know, it's like fucking strong.
only way to get in here is because of our friend Elgato. Otherwise it would be like a mission impossible. You need trust for months to uh, get trust with the local people. And because through our connections and Elgato's here in Colombia, we can get in very quick and very easy. Unfortunately, last night one of the, the second men at Far got killed. So we brought the newspaper. We just bought the newspaper because we got an SMS one at the newspaper. And uh, this could give some kind of friction. Because of course when somebody gets killed, the tensions are a little bit high. So we'll see how it goes down today. And it was not far from no, it was 100 k's away from here when the uh, second man of the park got killed yesterday with six other uh, rebels. So we'll see how this comes out. They know better than anyone else where we can find the more isolated patches, the ones that have been really inbreeding, the areas where one family controls one big field and every year they keep planting and planting and planting from that field and making seeds in the same field. Right. And that's when we know we, have, we are on to something really special. Maybe somebody's gonna put an M16 in your coolio tonight. <laughs>